Hello there, my name is Gary Sims, Randall Authority. We're at Arm TechCon 2015 in uh, California, and I met up with Zach, Se Zach Selby from Arm. Hi, Zach, nice to see you. Gary, a pleasure. So tell me a bit about what you do for Arm. So I'm lucky enough to be one of the IoT nerds at Arm. So what we do is we go and build technology and work with a whole bunch of partners to make IoT into what we know from mobile and cloud. Something really easy to build into real products and real solutions. Now IoT is a word that the industry is talking about, but maybe the average consumer doesn't really know what it is yet. What, what will IoT mean to consumers? So the way I think about it is that when, when IoT is really successful, our lives should just be a little bit easier, a little bit more intuitive when we're working with real devices. And I'll just use the thermostat as a great example, right? What Nest did with the thermostat is they, they recreated yeah. an everyday object that was kind of clunky, right? You just, you never boring. really got it. It was boring, <laughs> but they spent the time and energy to really make the user experience of the thermostat better. And what the user experience is, is that it learns how you live and does its job for you so that you don't have to think about it at all. And I think that's the magic of IoT, right? We're gonna see that happen with your door lock, right? With your automobile, with your other everyday household items that you use in your life, and they'll just get a little bit easier to use, a little bit more automatic. You won't have to think about them or worry about them. And that's when we've succeeded in IoT. Now that is a really good definition, I, I really like that. Now what's ARM role, ARM's role in this IoT revolution? So ARM as a technology company, um, with our partners, we produce most of the chips that go into devices that, that are in the IoT. So electronic gadgets in your home, um, in your street lights, in your energy meters, all over. And what we can do, thanks to a common architecture, is we can provide software, tools for developers, cloud services to make things easier to everyone in our ecosystem. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're building up a, a software ecosystem we call Embed to make it easier for everyone to create IoT solutions. And I mean everyone, right? I mean everyone from the, the tinkerer who's thinking about the new cool IoT thing to the startup that's already on their way to creating a, a new company to big established companies that are making their products better, right? We want to make IoT accessible to all of these guys. And in fact, for the sort of the hacker at home, the, the entry level price for Embed is, is really cheap, isn't it? Like $20, $20 or something, yeah. and you can get yourself up and running. Yeah, uh, $20, a simple development board. We've made the operating system that we've launched recently, Embed OS. We've made it completely free. Free as in, go to production, make a product. Tell us about it, and we'll help tell the world about what kind of success you had in doing that. And um, we found that doing that in an ecosystem, we have everyone from cloud providers like IBM, um, all the way down to uh, silicon vendors working together to make that easier. That's really exciting. That's that's power of an ecosystem rather than doing everything Exactly, wrong. the power of the ecosystem. I think we're going to look at some demos now. Yes, great. So this is a new wearables reference design that we created to try to show what are some of the cool things that you can do with a wearable thanks to Ambit OS. And so we have a fully functional um, low energy wearable. And by low energy, the really amazing thing is with a new type of software, um, energy consumption savings technology, we're able to use Cortex-M microcontrollers and produce something that has eight weeks of battery life. D did you just say eight weeks? Eight weeks, not eight days, not eight hours, eight weeks. So here I'm still at 78% battery life, six weeks left, over eight weeks in total. And that's running a real watch with real applications on it at the same time. That, that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's, it's going to make wearables and our other products a lot easier to use and a lot, um, lot less intrusive in our life. Things like recharging. So this is the main PCB inside the watch. What you can see here, we got a Cortex M3 from Scilabs. We got a M0 from Nordic Semiconductors. And we got an F Cortex M4 from ST. We also got a GPS from Ublox. We got an NMC chip from uh, ST. And uh, we got a 9-axis motion sensor chip. We also got buses and uh, LEDs and a uh, vibrator. And an SD card if you want to store some um, some more information. And here you can see the small battery we're using. It's a 160 milliamp hours uh, lithium polymer. And uh, if you look on the screen here, you can see that uh, we can achieve very low power consumption. It gives us a battery life of around one to two months.